Hey, how you doing? I'm Van. Welcome back to the only channel on YouTube that you're not subscribed to yet, and I think that's really unfair. Quick heads up, you might hear my son playing Fortnite in the background. If you do, just know that he's very excited and having a great time. But welcome back. Welcome part to my Welcome back. Welcome back to my six-part series on Captain Planet, or more specifically, the worst episodes of Captain Planet as rated by IMDb. This is part five of the six part series. And because of that, um, if you're watching this part, go back and watch the other ones because I'm just jumping straight into it this time. I'm, I'm tired of this. I want to be done with Captain Planet. Remember to subscribe. I would appreciate it tremendously. I just broke a thousand recently. Thank you guys so much. I want to do something for my 1000 subscriber special, but I have no idea what. So if anybody has any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. A thousand may not seem like a lot to people watching this video, but it's a really big deal to me. I've been trying this for a while, uh, longer than this channel's been around, definitely. And, uh, it's just neat to see something finally coming of it, you know? Anyway, yeah, let's jump into this crap. We're going to be covering Season 5, Episode 13, Who's Running the Show? This clown right here has a pretty big part in this story because he's the eco-clown, and he's here to teach kids to help the environment, but he's a stupid, bumbling clown. And don't get me wrong, the Planeteers love it. Like, the Planeteers are big fans of this guy. They're, like, laughing their butts off right there in the front row watching the television in Gaia's house, which, at this point, I assume that they've killed Gaia and buried her under a flower bed or something because she's nowhere to be seen. Ask your parents to install water-conserving shower heads there. I guess they all just hang out now. Like, they have, like, a lair. And this is odd to me, mostly because in the previous episode they did not like each other whatsoever. Also, who's- who's that? I haven't seen him yet. Like, ever. Enough clowning around! It's time to kick off Operation Sweeps Week and sweep the week right off the air! Did she not complete that sentence? Like, sweep feet right off the air. She's saying the air. Oh my god, that just struck me now. The way she delivers that line, it comes off as there. So, woo. I kicked my tripod. Oh my goodness. Ten city blocks of tropical forest being cut down every minute? Nuclear waste being dumped today will remain poisonous for more than 10,000 years? Ted Turner listing the environmental facts and freaking out about them, which is his justification for creating the show to begin with. This entire episode is this. It is Ted Turner justifying Captain Planet and the Planeteers as something that needs to be on television. And it doesn't work. It does not make me want environmental television more. It doesn't. Sorry, Ted. I just, I hate that for you, but I, I can't help what is good and what isn't. Like, I appreciate the message. I appreciate the sincerity behind it and the genuine, like, concern he shows for the environment in this episode. But that's the only highlight. That's the only good thing. Everything else is stupid as hell. Most of them, I mean, I, I kind of get being concerned about them. And then we get to this one. World population to nearly double over the next 50 years? You know what the future is, my boy? Which, to me, carries the implication that Captain Planet supports eugenics. Or at least Ted Turner does. Which, you know, possible. He is crazy. He's a crazy old billionaire. Uh, so, wouldn't really shock me. And, but, but whatever, let's move on. No! The coalition of villains, formerly known as these guys, have broken into the TBS headquarters or whatever the TBS stand-in is at this. They've removed Silly Clown Man off of the air, which the Planeteers were enjoying tremendously, by the way. But on taking over the air, they begin to implement more violent or more awful programming in general, just promoting products that completely destroy the environment and completely promote violence and danger and terror and awful things. That's what this episode is about, by the way. It is the danger of television, which keep in mind that they have to cover their ass for this later on in one of the Planeteer alerts as well, because this is a television show. <laughs> Granted, it's trying to suck its own dick. It really is. It's going, it's like, you know, on its back, legs up, but it can't quite reach it. Mostly because the show's bad and everyone knows it's bad and we're just kind of watching a train wreck at this point. <laughs> you get it? because he's fat. Somebody put a sock in these suits! Why do you do that? Why do you wiggle them? Like, is there a camera? Well, there might be. They might be airing this, actually, now that I think about it. Like, you know what? That's fair. I can accept this. Also, I'm gonna just name this guy, because I, there's, I see he's got rats, and I see he looks kind of like a rat. I'm gonna call him Rat Man. You know, actually, I think they're, 
Is there a character called Rat King in this show? I know there is in, in Ninja Turtles, but I don't remember if there is in this show or not. I'm going to call him Rat King, and I'm going to hope I'm right. I think I am. I think I'm right. The Kilowatt Clan. You're really going to charge watching them enjoy life out of the power line. Yes, a real planeteer only uses oil lamps and hand crunk machines. If you use the power grid, you're an evil bastard. I hope you realize that. I hope you know that. Planeteers, not being a very big fan of this type of programming, have decided to take it upon themselves to take out the eco-villains at the whatever the TBS headquarters name is actually supposed to be. And it takes them a while to get there. And that's probably because the Planeteers are based on some remote island in the middle of nowhere. And the eco-villains are in the center of somewhere, like a big populated area. You'd think the Planeteers at this point would at least move a little closer, you know? It's been five seasons, you'd think they'd be smarter than that, but they do have to continue to hide Guy's body, so. To your parents into buying you Soldier Sam and the Sadistic Slammers. I mean, I gotta be honest, I would buy it. I know it wouldn't actually blow things up like it shows in the advertisement, but I mean, it's he's cool, look at him, he's a big guy, he's got a lot of guns, a lot of attachments, looks like he's high quality. They don't make toys like this anymore. Well, they do. They're just eighty dollars. Lethal radiator fluid. Until next time, kiddies. Think toxic thoughts. Yeah, Captain Planet just killed a dog live on air. By the way, <laughs> it's a cartoon dog, but which you know has a message. I understand it as an adult, but as a child, don't don't think this would do much for me. I think this would make me change the channel. Probably not. I was a weird kid. Something must be very wrong at Learner Communications. Learner Communications, that's what it's called. Also, uh, just, just to point out, if you use electricity, you're a bad person. Learner Communications here, they could, they, none of, none of this is environmentally harmful. Don't worry about that. Don't, details, details. Three. Check it! Check it! Check it! Huh? Yeah. You get it. Because he's fat. I'm so sick of this joke. That this is the this is this character. This is all he is, is one big long fat joke. Every time you see him, that is the only personality trait he displays is fat. <laughs> so let's introduce you to the real villain of this episode, and that is Duke Nukem. Nukolo, the planet destroyer! We'll rip him apart! Now Dookie here takes things to an extreme later on in the episode that's kind of foreshadowed right here. Granted, you could say it's Dr. Blight's influence kind of egging him on. He's just having fun with it, you know? He's just getting in character. He's just having a good time, WrestleMania style. Uh, well, it, uh, until the chainsaw. Help! 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 Stand still, twerp! Oh, also, just for the record, I didn't mention this guy earlier. He's Ted Turner's assistant. Uh, who he refers to as boy, despite clearly being like 45. So the Planeteers arrive, and they stop Duke Nukem from killing this poor fool. In doing so, they agitate Mr. Nukem, and he starts blasting him. But his aim is terrible, though, so it's completely okay. Something that they literally comment on. So, can't blame him. Watch out! That's still egoic! That's the first showcase of the Ring of Power being used in this episode. The Ring of Power, the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> this is the first showcase we get of the Ring's powers in this episode, and it's just it's like a, it's, a, it's a lump. Why not create a wall that they can't bypass? No, just create a lump and trip them. That's that's all we need, Kwame. Thank you, thank you for that. I appreciate it. You ever hear a target practice? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, throw a, throw a candy bar in, in any general direction and he will be distracted. Just do it. Why don't they carry food for just such an occasion? Like, they know, they know it's his weak point. They know he will be distracted by it. Why don't they, why don't they bring it? Plan for your enemies, guys. Like, there is nowhere to go but up. Oh. Much better. Much better job, Kwame. I... Phenomenal, thank you. So the Planeteers managed to escape to the roof, and upon doing so, 
the water tower is blasted by uh, by old Duke Nukem here somehow. Like it ricochets despite never ricocheting ever again and not ricocheting ever prior and blasts a hole in the water tower, washing the Planeteers almost off of the roof despite the fact that they have time to summon Captain Planet. You know, whatever, this is a crisis for them. I understand wanting to, to summon Cap here. Um, But doesn't one of their magic rings control water or something? Possibly? Use it. Anyway, here's Captain Planet. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet. Also, weirdly, Cap makes a lot of, uh, pop culture references in this episode like he they're kind of doing like a robin williams jim carrey thing with him i think it's just because this is an episode about television and they're just referencing television a lot cap briefly does battle with the eco villains and in doing so he wears out duke nukem despite dookie blasting like crazy before now this is just a bit too much for him but then he's hit with his one weakness goop he's gooped every single time that he comes on screen, except in the one episode where he shows up in the past. Hog Tide, that one, that, that's the one. Every other time he gets covered in some kind of goop, and I, I don't know why. But th th that's his weakness, I guess that's probably why, actually, because he immediately goes back into the Rings of Power. Yours must recharge! <laughs> the power is yours! Which, again, kind of makes me infuriated at the last episode even more. Go watch that if you haven't, by the way. It's really dumb. It's way stupider than this one, I promise. So despite still having power in their rings, power that is used later, they then choose to run. I mean, I do understand it. Duke Nukem specifically is kind of a threat. He's the only real credible threat amongst them, actually. Being able to blast nuclear radiation out of his hands while everybody else is just fat, rat, and woman. <laughs> Those are the other villains. We have, we have one competent member... He's our powerhouse. Everyone else is just here for the clout. As part of their plan, they're going to blow the studio up once they're done airing their violent or awful programming. And genuinely, Dr. Blight is the only one making plans in this scenario. Hoggish is just a grunt. Rat King is also just a grunt. It's a good thing they didn't have henchmen in the animation budget this episode, you know? It sounds like it is coming from the closet. Careful, little buddy. Eco the Clown? I can't believe those creeps would do this to a great actor like you! Who is this guy? I feel like this is another self-insert character along with Ted Turner. This is somebody else who uh, is significant in the studio, but I don't know who he is. I don't know who he's supposed to be, and I don't know who he's supposed to represent. All I know is he's a stupid eco clown. Thanks. I was slamming my nose against the wall for hours. We need your help. I'm your clown. Ta-da! We're referencing a much more successful cartoon. Who are you guys? I, we're uh, the Filth Stones. Oh, okay, break a leg. I like that Dookie is very friendly to the people that are on his side though. Like he's a knight, he's a, he's just a simple lad. Like I kind of like him. He's just having a good time. He's just here for the, for the lulls, man. He, he doesn't know what's going on, but he he's into it. He's, he's a method actor. Which is the problem. Because their goal here is to destroy the studio. That is what they're doing in this particular footage, in this video that they are filming. This film that they're filming. And Dookie, being the method actor that he is, brings a nuke. I don't know why anyone's surprised, I don't know why anyone's shocked, but Dr. Blight quickly talks him down from it and replaces the nuke with a smaller, more manageable missile. Props to her. She doesn't want to die. Planeteers arrive just in time to stop them from executing the worst parts of their plan, namely the explosion. N and <sighs> this is why I have problems with the Planeteers not using their rings in more scenarios than they do. Because Linka uses wind, which blows both Duke Nukem and Dr. Blight back against these vehicles right here, right? One of them's a tank. Now, of course, I immediately assume that these are fake, like these are props or something like that, but then Rat King hops inside of one of them and uses it like a tank, meaning that these were actual real vehicles, real tanks, real steel, and that's how hard she blew them away with her wind. That is nuts. That's like, that's, use that more. If all of the rings are that capable of that level of power, they shouldn't even ever have to summon Captain Planet. But that's what they do anyway, because they're lazy as hell. I am Captain Planet! Score one for the Gipper! And score two for the Nuker! See, Dookie just manages to land his attacks when they count, that's all. He's like Shaq throwing free throws, like he can't actually do it, but every once in a while he scores a good one. What's up, kid? 
Cap manages to stop Duke Nukem by freezing the tower that he's standing on with the nuke. Dookie thankfully narrates for us, so we know what's happening. It's frozen in my hand! I'm frozen too! And of course, being the jobbers that the rest of them are, they're caught immediately, and the episode has to wrap up very, 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 very quickly. So, uh, let's go! The power is yours! We're not paying these kids, right? So the Planeteer Alert here is actually a pretty good one as a standalone Planeteer Alert. Without this episode as context for it, it actually has a good message, stating that you need to be informed in order to make educated decisions, in order to know the problems that are plaguing our, our world and our economy and everything else. But within the context of this episode, there's one particular line that really shows that they're just trying to cover their ass. Television is also a great way to learn about other cultures so we can understand each other better. Read, watch the news. It could have been more gratuitous. It could have been more just like, except for our channel and many eco-friendly TV show. But they didn't do that, and I do appreciate that. But that was the entire theme of the episode. This one's also loosely tied to it as well, not being terrible, again, uh, other than Gaia just standing there and staring at the camera menacingly. <laughs> but she's like stiff, she's like a corpse, she says nothing, she's just there. They're like, look, she's definitely still alive. And that's it. That's season 5, episode 13, Who's Running the Show? And it wasn't terrible. I do understand why it's one of the lowest rated episodes, though. It's very self-masturbatory. It's very self-congratulatory. It's very much self-aggrandizing from Ted Turner and TVS. He's lording his position over everybody. Like, look, you need to do this because violent TV is bad for children. Oh, uh, I had to burp. But at this point, we've really seen that that's not the case. Like, there are too many studies to show that violent video games and violent TV do not lead to greater showings of violence from the people that are engaging with that media. So this episode comes off as preachy and really, really dumb. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. Um, I, again, I recently broke a thousand subscribers recently, and I... Thank you. I'm gonna keep uploading content with regularity. I'm off for the next couple of days, actually, so I can try to work on it and try to come up with ideas for more content and start really, really focusing, because I don't, I don't think I'm gonna ever hit, like, a million or anything like that. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a positive thinker, but it would be nice to have a little extra money coming in from something, you know? My busted-ass tripod really needs, uh, really needs something. I just, I just spackled and duct-taped it back together, because it's, it's, falling apart. Anyway, y'all have a great rest of your night.